Yeah, we have no Barkley, Jacobs, or Taylor. So I may have an issue submitting starting lineups this week. Hopefully these rankings will be able to help you talk about all these matchups, of course. Starting tier one, CMC has a tough matchup against Philly. Who cares? The man's averaging 25 points per game. I mean, there is no other running back on this list over a large sample averaging more than 20. CMC is a wide gap above everybody else, regardless of what the matchup may be. Now, dropping down to our next tier, I know some people are worried about Travis Etienne, blah, blah, blah. Do not be concerned with Etienne. This is a running back that while the snap data didn't look good this past week, ultimately, he got hurt during the game. He missed some time. He's going to be good to go going forward. The spread on this game's massive between the Jags and the Bengals here, where you should be able to see the Jacksonville Jaguars run the ball in the second half. I, I don't know how to rank these next few guys. We'll go Bijan Robinson here at three. Hoga Morrence. Now, keep in mind, we drafted a lot of ETN, and I'm very biased with Bijan. So maybe tier two can be swapped around here a bit. Bijan only averaging about 14 and a half points per game. They have a very high floor with what usage you're going to get as a receiver. And I'm not too concerned about this game getting out of hand where they're not going to be able to run the ball in the second half. I mean, no, you're going up against the Jets, right? So you should be able to run the ball if they want. Austin Eckler at four is the player that's been falling down our rankings, but ultimately at the end of the day, still probably got to rank him as the top five guy. Yes, the receiving usage is down. Yes, he does not look like the same player. He just, just can't get up to any realistic top speed. But you have an implied team total of about 23 points here for the Los Angeles Chargers. So it's like, okay, well, you're going to have somewhat of a role as a receiver. You're in a very good offense. I mean, everybody else here, it's just so hard to rank these guys. Alvin Kamara had five. You can make an argument Kamara up to two, right? If you're playing in a full BBR format, if you wanted to move Kamara up to two, you do you. I mean, he's averaging 19.9 points per game. Right now, you have an implied team total of 21 points against Detroit. My thing is, I just don't see how this offense is moving the ball down the field, right? I mean, obviously, we should kind of ignore whatever I think about it, and we should probably just go whatever we are going to have from the Las Vegas sports books, but I don't know. I, I'm worried about the offense overall, but clearly you're going to get the check down volume. Now, jumping into our next tier, Jameer Gibbs operating in an offense with an implied team total of 25 points. So I'm going to have Gibbs here just because his offense should be much better than the Los Angeles Rams. Now, if you wanted to move Kyron Williams all the way up to two, I'm not going to fault you for it. Kyron Williams averaging 21 and a half points per game so far this season. Kyron Williams is the number two running back in fantasy from a points per game perspective. And I think going forward, we're probably going to be ranking Kyron Williams, that top five running back almost every single week. My issue is this week, you do have a very tough matchup against Cleveland. Now keep in mind, Cleveland is dealing with the multitude of injuries. However, so I mean, you actually have a respectable implied team total for the Los Angeles Rams, according to Vegas Sportsbooks. This often should be able to move the ball down the field which is why if you wanted to move Kyron above this, you can. Now, Rashad White will be that next guy at eight. If you're looking at Rashad White here, great matchup against the Carolina Panthers. I mean, this should be a team that can run the ball in the second half. This is also a spot at the same time where obviously White has the usage as a receiver. So a very high floor running back that's been used as that top 10 guy for quite some time. And it's a really good matchup as well against Carolina. Now, going over to our next guy, Tony Pollard will be at nine. Now, I know people are going to hate me for taking Tony Pollard here, but the fact of the matter is you have the usage as a receiver. You have the touchdown upside. You have an offense that projects out to score 27 and a half points. I mean, you go to underdog right now. I mean, they have Tony Pollard at even odds to score a touchdown. They have Tony Pollard more than less than 85 and a half total yards, more than less than three receptions. This is higher than a lot of other players in this range. I mean, they have Kyron Williams at 56 and a half rushing yards and Tony Pollard at 62 and a half. Now, if you wanted to go through and take the fewer than on Tony Pollard and the more than on Kyron Williams, I'm not going to fault you for it. I just want to kind of justify myself because we pretty much every week rank Tony Pollard as a must start option. And every week people get upset, but. You're in a great offense. You have a good workload, specifically as a receiver as well. Now, going over to DeAndre Swift, very tough spot. You're going up against the San Francisco 49ers. Most weeks, you're going to see the Eagles have an applied team total of around 26, 27 points. They're down at about 21.75 against the San Fran defense. And I mean, you know, based on what happened last year in the playoffs, that the 49ers have been looking forward to this game all year now. 
Swift averaging 14 half points per game should be fine. You'll notice a lot of these guys that I'm high on in the rankings. Obviously, with this being a PPR format, these guys have receiving workloads. So even if you were to see the overall efficiency fall off, you can still find them as a viable option. Right now at underdog, DeAndre Swift is at 55 and a half rushing yards for his pick -em. And of course, if you want to check out any of those pickums over on Underdog Fantasy, promo code Flock link is in the description in the comment section. Code Flock's going to get you a 100% deposit match, plus our rest of season fantasy football rankings and tiers, and a Dak Prescott special pickum more than less than half a total yard for the Thursday night game. Now, Brees Hall will be our next running back here at 11. Brees Hall averaging about 13.7 points per game. Interesting spot against Atlanta. While, yeah, the Jets are supposed to be horrendous. They have an applied team total about 15 and a half points. I mean, Atlanta's down there at like a little over 18. So it should be one of the closer games that the Jets play. So you should have Brees Hall running the ball in the second half, even if this is a horrendous offense. Now, David Montgomery will be our next running back. And if you are playing in a non-PBR format based off the touchdown upside that you would get from David Montgomery running by one of the best offensive lines in the NFL, in one of the best offenses in the NFL, Montgomery would be much higher than this. It's just he's not really going to get involved as a receiver as you're going to see from someone like Jameer Gibbs in the tier above. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, we're going to continue to rank both these running backs as RB1s. There's just more than enough production to go around in Detroit. Now, Zag Moss will be our next guy here at 13. With Zag Moss, hard not to rank him as that borderline RB1, right? I mean, it is a tough matchup going up against a good Tennessee Titans rush defense. We know typically what you're going to see against the Titans here are offenses going out there and trying to air the ball out. But ultimately, if you go through and look at the ceiling on what you had with Zag Moss, and this is why we identified him as the waiver wire candidate even before the injury was disclosed for Jonathan Taylor. You are looking at a running back that when Taylor does not play, gives you the elite level ceiling. I mean, 165 rushing yards, multiple rushing touchdowns. In that week, the man almost drops 200 total yards. I mean, against Baltimore, he has almost 150 total yards and he gets you the receiving touchdown. I'd imagine that's probably the biggest game Baltimore's led up all season now. Now going over to our next guy, Isaiah Pacheco will be here at 14. Pacheco could go a little bit lower than this if, Jarrett McKinnon ends up playing but what we saw this past week if you have no Jarrett McKinnon Isaiah Pacheco is just going to dominate I mean you will have some Clyde Edwards Alaire mixed in but ultimately CEH isn't really going to have a large role here and if there's no McKinnon Pacheco is going to get every single touch now going over to our next two guys putting them here just because I don't know how to rank them um, Devon Achan and Raheem Bostert I will say while yes if you are worried about HN's first week back in, you can go through and you can bench him if you really wanted to. My thought process is, okay, this is supposed to be the best offense in the NFL this week. Las Vegas is giving this team an implied team total of 29.75 points. That's number one going up against Washington. They are massive favorites. So I almost want to start both running backs regardless, similar to the Detroit Lions situation. However, I would be understanding if you wanted to bench A-Chan based off what happened his first week back this past time. We're going to have to monitor the injury reports. Now, going over to Derrick Henry, yes, it's a lower than where we had him last week. But last week, he was going up against Carolina, right? It's a beautiful matchup for Henry. This week, there's about a one-point spread on this game for Tennessee and Indy. Now, that's very important, right? I mean, looking at the spread for Derrick Henry has been one of the most predictive things that you can look at and trying to figure out how this man's going to score on a week-to-week -week perspective. As simply, if you're looking at Henry, if the game's close or if the Titans win, he will be viable. If it turns out to be a blowout, what you're going to see is you're going to see a lot more Taji Spears. They're not really going to be able to get Derrick Henry going. So it really does depend on the overall game flow. And maybe you're a little more excited about that game flow, considering the fact that you have no Jonathan Taylor in here now. Now, going over to our next year, we will have Javante Williams at 18. And to be completely honest with you, Javante Williams should probably be higher than this, right? I mean, if you're looking at the underlying usage, Javante Williams is almost getting everything here. I mean, he did suffer the neck injury this past week. So if you're looking to snap that, it'll be a little bit skewed. I mean, it's not like Javante was phenomenal this past week, but it was a tough matchup against Cleveland. And while, yeah, he's only averaging 10 and a half points per game so far this season. Still, ultimately, at the end of the day, I mean, it's hard to look at those games early in the year where he got hurt and use that and skew his points per if you look at what he's done since coming back from his injury, I mean, he is taking over this running back room and he is turning into that three down workhorse. 
Now, Kenneth Walker will be our next guy in here at 19. I honestly don't even know why we rank this dude. Um, this is too high for Kenneth Walker. You have an applied team total of 18 and a half points. You're going up against the Dallas Cowboys defense, one of the best defenses in the NFL, and you have absolutely no role as a receiver. If Kenneth Walker were to sit, obviously we can put Zach Charbonnet somewhere in here, but to be completely honest with you, when I made these rankings, we put Kenneth Walker too high. He should be down closer to 21-22, and I'd say Charbonnet would be a one-for-one -one replacement with him in these rankings if Walker were to miss. Now, Stevenson will be our next running back at 20. The New England Patriots have the fourth lowest implied team total in the NFL this week, only about 16 and a half points. So ultimately, one of the worst offenses and Ramondre Stevenson's been an inefficient running back. But with that being said, I mean, if you are going to be looking at what we have with Ramondre Stevenson, Ezekiel Elliott's getting used less and less in this offense as of late. Ramondre does have the receiving role as well, and he has a fine matchup going up against the Los Angeles Chargers. Now, Joe Mixon will be our last running back in this tier with Joe Mixon. He's averaging about 13 half points per game. This is the worst offense in the NFL. At least if you're looking at the implied team totals this week, you have 15.25 points going up against Jacksonville. You're massive dogs. You're probably not going to be able to run the ball in the second half. At least that's what we saw in the Pittsburgh game where Mixon had eight carries, four or 16 receiving yards. Now he's going to get used on all three downs, so that does give him somewhat of a floor, but it is very difficult to make an argument for Joe Mixon. Now going down to our next tier, we're going to have Brian Robinson in here at 22. Now this is under the assumption that Antonio Gibson does play, so the receiving role for Brian Robinson is not going to be too, too large. You actually have Washington projecting out to be one of the worst offenses in the NFL this week. And this is one of the largest, if not the largest spreads. I believe the spread in this game's 10 points between Miami and Washington. So maybe you could move Brian Robinson up just a bit. But fundamentally, at the end of the day, this is a running back that's going to be in a blowout. And if Gibson plays, he's not going to have a massive role playing catch up in said blowout. Now, Devin Singletary will be our next RB here at 23. Singletary, good matchup on paper, of course, going up against Denver. One of the best offenses in the NFL. And looks like he is the full-blown starting running back in Houston. We're not too worried about Damian Pierce having a super large role. But with that being said, I mean, the Singletary usage really hasn't been there outside of the one week where he had 30 carries, right? I mean, that was very exciting. But ultimately, this past week, you're looking at six carries. And it's kind of been one or the other with Singletary so far this season. You've seen him either get involved as a receiver, like this week where he had seven targets, or you've seen him involved as a rusher, but in those games where he gets the workload as a rusher, he's only walking away with one or two receptions. So, I mean, I honestly probably should have Devin Singletary higher than this. Singletary probably should be higher than like Mixon, Stevenson, Walker. He should probably be around RB18. But I don't know. I just kind of want to see him put it all together, right? I, I want to see the usage on all three downs. And I will say I invested a lot into Singletary. So I'm kind of hoping that I am wrong. I'm hoping Singletary just absolutely crushes. Now, our next two guys will be Jalen Ward and Najee Harris. Uh, nothing really changes. The offense looks better, which is very exciting. And it's a very good matchup against Arizona. But fundamentally, this is still a spot where you are splitting the backfield 50-50. So if these running backs are splitting it 50-50 and it's still not a great offense, even if it's a great matchup, it's super hard to be excited about either one of these guys. And then Jerome Ford, our next guy with Ford, he's actually taken over here. I mean, Jerome Ford doesn't really look like he's sharing this backfield too much more with Kareem Hunt. But with that being said, you have an applied team total of 18 points for this offense. So it's like, oh, okay, am I really excited to go out there and start Jerome Ford in one of the worst offenses in the NFL? where you just are decimated with injuries across the board, averaging 12 and a half points. Probably not super excited to start him in that instance. And then James Conner in an offense that also has an applied team total of 18 points. I called James Conner a buy low candidate last week, thinking his receiving volume would bump up. And what happened? Um, this turned into a three-man running back by committee. Now, I'm not completely giving up on James Conner. I don't think this is going to be a three-man running back by committee rest of season. I think it's kind of hard to use the usage that we saw last week with these running backs and say that's going to carry through the rest of the season because it was a complete blowout. The Cardinals were never in the game. But I do want to at least see James Conner go out there and James Conner have the majority of the work before we put him in our starting lineups now, especially if Vegas is telling us the Arizona Cardinals are only supposed to score 18 points, one of the worst offenses in the NFL this week. 
But I think that's all I have for y'all. Uh, again, if you enjoyed the video, please go down there, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you play fantasy football. And if you wanted to check out any of those pickums over on Underdog Fantasy, you can find that link in the description in the comment section. Promo code Flock will get you a 100% deposit match plus our rest of season fantasy football rankings and tiers and that Dak Prescott special pick of more than less than half a total yard. But thank you again, ladies and gentlemen. I really do appreciate you. Really hope you have a great day and really hope we get to see you out with the live stream later tonight.